Hi guys, in this video we'll be looking at an introduction to primary and secondary responses, the primary immune response, the secondary immune response, and then we'll finish with a summary. So the primary and secondary immune responses both refer to the fight against a pathogen invading the body. When a pathogen first infects the body, for the first time we've seen it, the initial immune response is quite slow. The reason for this is because we haven't seen the pathogen before. So it's a new pathogen with new antigens, which has somehow passed our innate or basic non-specific immune system, and it's invaded into the body. And in order to get rid of the pathogen, we need certain immune cells like B and T lymphocytes to tackle the pathogen, but it takes a long time and so it's very slow. The first slow response is known as the primary immune response, the first response. So the primary immune response is the initial response caused by a first infection. In the primary response, antibodies get made which are specific to the pathogen's antigens, and they're produced by B cells. So remember the pathogens have antigens or certain proteins on their surface, and it's the response to these antigens which trigger the immune system. And the antibodies produced are complementary in shape to these antigens, and they aim to help the immune system to tackle those antigens. But producing these antibodies takes quite a long time, because there are lots of different steps required to find the specific antibodies and to make enough of them. Eventually, when the infection is cleared and all the pathogens are dealt with, the specific antibodies which we used don't stay in the blood. So they don't just freely float around in the blood. They basically wear down and are eliminated. However, this doesn't mean that we completely forget about this pathogen. When the body is infected for a second time by that same pathogen with the same antigens, those antibodies have to be made again. So the pathogen returns, for example, if it's a cold that you got rid of but your friend still has the cold, the pathogen might invade the body again. But the B lymphocytes and particular cells will remember the antibodies that we made. So all we need to do this time is make the antibodies again so that they can tackle the pathogen. During this second time, the immune response is much quicker, and this is called the secondary immune response. So the secondary immune response is a more rapid and a more vigorous response caused by a second or subsequent infection by the same pathogens. This is why if we see the same pathogen a second time or a third time, we know exactly how to respond to it. So let's talk about the primary immune response in more detail. In the primary immune response, the immune system has never come across this pathogen before. It's a new pathogen to our system. So we don't know which antibodies or which receptors respond to this pathogen, and we don't know the best way to deal with it. The first steps in dealing with it are where the lymphocytes need to detect the pathogen's antigens to make sure that we produce a specific response. So remember, B and T cells have lots of different receptors and antibody receptors on their surface membranes, and they have to find the right one with the correct complementary shape. There are millions of types of B and T cells floating around with different shapes, so it will take time for the right shape to match the antigen of the pathogen. So to produce the right antibodies, the B lymphocytes have to undergo first clonal selection and then clonal expansion. So in clonal selection, among all of the B lymphocytes that are in the body, the one with the correct antibody or the binding site is chosen because eventually this will come across the pathogen. They bind together to form an antigen antibody complex. And so this B lymphocyte has been selected for once this has happened, with some help of other cells, this then divides by mitosis to form an army of these B lymphocytes. So this is clonal expansion. So both of these processes are leading to a lot of cells making this specific antibody, but it's going to take time. And then after this, the correct B lymphocyte needs to differentiate into both plasma cells and memory cells. When it differentiates into memory cells, these ones will circulate in the blood to keep a record of this pathogen. When they differentiate into plasma cells, the plasma cells make antibodies, which get secreted into the blood. At this point, the plasma cells can produce lots of the specific antibody, and this helps to clear the infection. So now we have an army of plasma cells making the same type of antibody because they're all clones of each other, and then these swarms of antibodies can deal with the pathogen. So this is how the primary immune response works, and it's very good at clearing the pathogen, but the whole process from start to finish takes a long time and so this is why it takes a longer time to clear the infection. And symptoms usually appear. The pathogen starts doing damage, which often is visible as various different symptoms because it's had the time while the immune system is setting up its response. 
So now that we've talked about the primary immune response, we need to discuss the secondary response. If we've cleared the pathogen, but then later the same pathogen invades the body for a second time, there already are memory cells floating around in the blood. So remember, these memory cells come from differentiated B cells, and they keep a record of the previous pathogen and the antigen information that it has. So when the pathogen comes back for another round, memory cells quickly recognize the specific antigens from the same pathogen. Essentially, these memory cells are kind of patrolling around the body, keeping that specific binding site present on their cell membrane, and it's waiting for the pathogen to come back. If it does come back, they instantly recognize the pathogen, and then they become activated. At this point, the memory B cells can rapidly start forming differentiated plasma cells, so it divides massively very fast to produce these plasma cells, at which point the plasma cells can make the antibody as before to tackle the pathogen very quickly. As well as this, we have memory T cells, which also get activated when they see the pathogen again, and they can differentiate into T killer cells and T helper cells. And we've talked about this in previous videos, where T helper cells help the plasma cells to differentiate, and the killer cells help to kill any cells which have infections in them. This secondary response is a lot quicker because the clonal selection and clonal expansion stages don't need to happen. So we no longer need to find the correct B lymphocyte with the right shape because the memory cells already know the correct shape, so we don't need to do this. And with clonal expansion, where we had to make many of those B lymphocytes, are no longer needed. All we need are the memory cells to form the plasma cells. The plasma cells then produce lots of antibodies much sooner and they do it much more rapidly in the secondary response compared to the primary response. So you can illustrate this on a graph. If we had time in days on the x-axis and we had the concentration of antibody on the y-axis, if we say that the beginning is where we have our first infection, infection number one of a particular pathogen, eventually it's going to take a while but the antibody level will rise and eventually the immune system will clear the infection and the antibody level will drop back down again. Sometimes for a particular illness this can take between 10 to 30 days before the antibodies really peak. So it sometimes means that when you have an illness, it can last a good couple or three weeks. Let's say at this point, the infection returns. So we get infection round two, and this is the same pathogen. At this point, what happens is the memory cells need a little bit of time to respond, but then the level of antibodies shoot up to a much higher level and they do so much more quickly. So at this point, we have the second response or the secondary response. We have a higher level of antibodies and we also have a sooner time in which those antibodies are produced. So it only takes a few days for this response and the pathogen gets cleared. The concentration of antibodies thus reaches a much higher concentration in a shorter period of time. So for a given time, in the primary response, the antibody level would be quite low, but for the secondary response, it would be much higher early on. And usually this is fast enough to prevent any symptoms from happening. So the whole point of this is to kill the pathogen before it does damage. The overall purpose is to stop the damage from happening. In a primary response, there's too much time taken up, so we see symptoms. But in a second response, we don't see symptoms usually because it's cleared so fast. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you're looking for an amazing A-level biology resource, join me today in my series of engaging bite-sized video tutorials. Just click the snap revised smiley face, and together, let's make A-level biology a walk in the park.